Shun presents a little history of religion, based on the book by Richard Holloway. Chapter Seven: The Wanderer. Special feature. Invisible ink. Upper. It's a short two-letter word. The U is pronounced up. The R is rolled the way a Scot would pronounce it, like upper. So it is er or er, and it is where one of the most important figures in the history of religion was born, which is sometime during the eighteen hundred BCE. The patriarch Abraham. Abraham is claimed by Jews. Christians and and Muslims as their founding father. I mean, wait a second. How could this person be the founder of three religions? I guess we'll never answer that. But think of a tiny stream trickling out of a distant mountain that becomes three mighty rivers, thousands of miles away on a vast plain, and you'll probably get the idea. Or was it the southeast of Mesopotamia, a Greek name that means between two rivers? More specifically, the Tigris and Euphrates River, which I've discussed a lot and plenty a lot of times on this channel already. Ur was in the country that we now call Iraq, which is right next to Iran. But that's not important. According to the story that comes down from us, Abraham was the son of a person called Terah, and Abraham wasn't alone. He had two brothers. Both of them were called Nahor and Haran. In the Bible, we find their story in a place called the Genesis. But an old teaching in the Hebrew Bible has more stories about them. It tells us that they were shepherds, pasturing sheep in the lush meadows of the Euphrates Valley. <sighs> okay, let me just get my breath here. <sighs> and Tara had a profitable sideline, making making statues or idols of the gods worshipped by the people of the region. The Mesopotamians had four top gods. Invisible ink time. Anu was the god of the heavens. Ki was the goddess of the earth. Enlil was god of the air, and Iki being the god. Well, Iki being the god of water. The sun and moon were also worshipped as gods. It should also be mentioned that all of these gods and all the people in well the region all believed that the gods were all the natural forces. It's yeah. So that the natural forces of nature were almost automatically thought of as divine, like the people of India, the inhabitants of Mesopotamia were something to look at when they made their devotions to the gods. Terra was happy to oblige them from his idol workshop anyway. One day, when he was absent and Abraham was in charge of the whole business, a guy came. <coughs> A guy came in to buy an idol. How old are you? Asked Abraham. Seventy, said the man. Then you're an idiot, Abraham replied. You were born seven decades ago, yet you're going to worship an idol that was made in a moment. Declined the purchase, took back his money, and left the shop. Well, at least that's what the person did. His brothers were furious when they heard what happened. They warned their father that Abraham was endangering the family business with his strong opinions. So Terah banned Abraham from the front of the shop and ordered him instead to perform the role of receiving the offering on display. So one day, a woman arrived with a gift of food for one of the gods. Instead of proffering the food, he mocked her. It has a mouthful, right? He said, but I can neither eat the meal you prepared for it nor say thank you afterwards. In his hands, but they can't pick up a single morsel of the food that you brought. So this was dangerous talk for two reasons: challenging the settle, well, religion, settlement religion of a community is never a popular thing to do. But it's mad worse if the criticism also threatens the local economy. But hang on a second, why didn't he just say that these toys and see how people were gullible and just move on? Why did he get so angry? It was because he was a prophet who heard the voice of God speaking to it. Into his head, saying that he was the only one and true God. He did not just disdain the idols, images of the gods. Well, he hated them because they prevented his children from coming to know their own father. Like a parent whose children have been stolen by strangers, he wanted them back, and those who have kidnapped them punished. This is an important part in the turning point of human story, and is worth another moment's thought. 
It is obvious from our history that humans are good at hating each other, and are usually those who differ from us in the same way of the objects of hatred. Whether it's race, class, color, or sex that differs us, actually, for the sakes of children watching this, let me say gender. Even hair color can prompt ugly behavior on us. So can religion. In fact, religious hatred is probably the deadliest form of this human disease because it gives human dislike divine justification. It is one thing to hate people because you don't like their opinions. It is another thing to say God hates them too and wants them exterminated. So it is worth noticing how intense religious conviction can add a dangerous element to human relationships. As another incident from Abraham's story, this will remind us. As well as telling him to hate idols, the voice in Abraham's head ordered him to leave his father's country and migrate to another t- land where in time he was to be a great nation. So Genesis tells us that Abraham set out from his family, his flock and herds, and traveled west across the Euphrates till he came to the land of the legendary Canaan. Which is known today as Israel or Palestine, lay on the edge, eastern edge of the Great Sea, which we now call the Mediterranean. Abraham settled not on the coast but inland, across the limestone ridge that formed the spine of the country. And there, his family, with their flocks and herds, pros- prospered. Then one day, the voice in Abraham's head spoke to him again and told him to take his son Isaac to a local mountain where he was to offer him as a sacrifice to God. Abraham was used to killing animals and. Burning them to as well as an offering and gift for God, but he had never been commanded to kill one of his own children. But he dared not question the order. He rose early next morning, roped a pile of wood onto his. Beep. So he set out onto the top of the mountain with the firewood and the knife ready for the sacrifice with his son. And then Ab- and Abraham's son Isaac said, "Where is the animal we're going to sacrifice?" And he said, "Don't worry." Set up the fire and the place where he'll well sacrifice the animal and tied his son to the post and was about to slit the throat of his son when his the Almighty God came down and said, "Abraham, your willingness to kill your son without order, with one step of the order, proves your loyalty to me. So I will spare your son." So he spared his son and didn't sacrifice him. Which really, the Genesis doesn't tell us about how Isaac was feeling during this time, but it's not really hard to imagine what it would have been like. I like to think he was very, very terrified, so that he fainted off the mountain after he was released and landed, and landed on some counter, which saved him. This isn't confirmed, but that's what I like to think. So, yeah, Abraham was a wanderer, and after his death, the people he found to continue to migrate. As people have always done in their search for a better life, the story says that that some generations after this Abraham, after the death of Abraham, a great famine hit the land of Canaan and prompted his descendants to take the road again. This time, they went south across another great river into Egypt, where the next chapter of their history opened, and we'll reacquaint ourselves with Moses. See you guys in the next episode in the bull rushes.